Welcome to the first episode of Microbrews, my new video series on how to make the best use of a microscope in your home or craft brewery. In this video, I'm going to go over the basic parts, handling, and care of your microscope. So beneath this cover is my microscope, which was manufactured a very long time ago, somewhere between 1957 and 62. As old as it is, the technology in here is the same as you would find in a more modern microscope. And in fact, this particular unit still sells for a few thousand dollars when they come up on the market. The key to the long life is partially due to the good construction of this microscope, but it's also due to the careful care and storage of the scope by myself and by the three or four people who owned it previously. Now as cheesy as this may sound, this cover really is the secret to this microscope's long life. There's a lot of really fine parts in here, small gears, uh, optical components that are very sensitive to dust and moisture. And so of course having a cover on your scope whenever it's not in use will help to protect all of those parts. Likewise, uh, moisture is a major risk factor for a lot of the components in a microscope. So you always want to be storing it in as dry a location as you can, preferably someplace uh, free of any sort of risk of leaks or uh, humidity. So when I remove the cover, you can see what we have here is a pretty typical microbiological microscope. So if we start at the top, here we have what's called a binocular head, uh, binocular because it has two eyepieces. We have the armature, which is the component that is supporting the head. We then have uh, the base, which has a lamp in the back, and then some optics that come here to where the illumination actually comes up to the sample. Above that, we have the condenser, uh, which focuses the light on the sample. The stage where you put your sample, and this is a mechanical stage, so it can be moved uh, with these controls. We then have what is called uh, the nose piece, which contains the different lenses uh, that this microscope is equipped with. Uh, and that is essentially uh, the major parts of the microscope. Now, one of the first things that you need to consider whenever you are handling a microscope is how to move it. And what you don't want to do is pick it up by the armature. Uh, this armature is really important because it's what keeps the optics aligned with uh, the light source and with your sample. And so if you were to bend that, you would ruin your microscope. What you want to do instead is always lift from the base using the armature simply to support the microscope and keep it from tipping over. Over the rest of the video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the microscope, tracing the light as it passes through the system. So my microscope is a bulb type uh, light source, uh, which is located here on the back. Most newer scopes use LEDs, and these are simply built up into the front. So in my system, there's actually a series of lenses between the bulb uh, and the illumination site, which will direct the light, whereas in an LED system, uh, everything is built in right at, at the illumination source. Now, whether you have a bulb type or an LED type, ideally you want to try and find a microscope which has an adjustable uh, di uh, diaphragm here on that light source. That's really important for getting good quality images out of your microscope. So this field diaphragm allows you to adjust uh, the shape of the light coming out of your lamp. The next thing the light's gonna encounter as it moves up through the stage is this uh, part here, which is called your condenser. And this is what really shapes the light so that you get a nice, uh, even illumination with good contrast on your image. This is a key, key element for getting good images, and that's why I would always recommend you get a microscope that has a condenser. Not all microscopes will, and ones without a condenser are generally not good for microbiological work. The condenser is a complex component of the microscope. Adjusting it and using it properly is difficult. So I actually have a whole episode uh, later in the series that's pretty much dedicated on how to use this properly. Above the condenser is the stage where you place the slide containing your sample. You focus on that sample using the focus knobs here on the side. There's typically a coarse knob which is on the outside uh, that moves the stage quickly. And then a finer focus knob uh, which allows you to more carefully tune uh, your focus. Now most microscopes move the stage, but some will instead move the nose piece uh, where the lenses are located. In either case, it works in the same fashion and it's just slight differences in design. And this is the stage of the microscope, which is where you're going to place your sample. Stages come in two predominant forms. This is what we would call a mechanical stage, which as you can see, allows you to position your sample quite accurately 
using uh, these knobs here attached to the stage. Other microscopes will have a simpler stage, which is basically just a flat platform, uh, often with some clips where you can slide a slide in uh, and use the clips to hold it into place. On these stages, you have to use your hands to move your sample, which is fine in most cases, but it can be a little challenging at high magnification. So if you can afford it, a mechanical stage is great, but if you're budget conscious and you're looking to save some money, a mechanical stage is the first feature I would give up. The nose piece is what holds your objective lenses, which are the lenses that do the majority of the magnification of your sample. Different microscopes will have different lenses, uh, giving them different capabilities. So in my case, I have a fairly standard microbiological setup with a 10x, a 60x, and a 100x objective. Different microscopes may have different setups, which will give them different capabilities. I will discuss lenses in more detail in episode two. The final destination for light traveling through your microscope is the headpiece, which is what contains the ocular lenses, which are the lenses you actually look through with your eyes. Headpieces tend to come in three major forms. What I have here is what's called a binocular scope because it has two lenses. If you're doing a fair amount of microscopy, this is what I'd recommend because it's the most comfortable to use. There's also a monocular microscope, which has just a single objective or eyepiece. And these are perfectly fine for casual use, but you may find your eyes get strained if you use them for long periods of time. The third type is what's called a trinocular scope, and that's a binocular scope with an additional port usually coming out of the top to mount a camera. This is really unnecessary for the vast majority of brewery uses. I can think of no reason why a brewer outside of yeast lab would need a trinocular uh, head. In fact, Simple devices like these are readily available for purchase or to make, which allow you to do things like melt a cell phone onto the microscope and to use that as a camera. So that is a quick tour of the major parts of your microscope, some of the basics of handling your microscope, and a few suggestions on features to look for on your microscope. So join me in episode two for a tour and explanation of your microscope's lenses.